Hello, welcome to Tile Coach. I'm Isaac Ostrom, and today is day five of working on this shower remodel here. If you want to see the other videos, I'll put the links in the description. I'm making step by step videos on this shower remodel. So, if you want to see how we furred out the walls to get them plumb, if you want to see how we did the self leveler on the floor, if you want to see the tear out, all those videos will be in the links below. Also, make sure that you are subscribed and have your notifications on so you see those videos. I make about one a week, but today I'm really excited, really glad you are here to see us put in the RSS foam pan. This is the pan. What's nice about this is it is a custom size. So not only was I able to get a, a custom size made perfectly for the shower opening, but I also got a flow effects cutout in it and this drain location you'll notice is not centered in the pan, which most preformed pans come, like Suter Curdy, they always have a center drain. They do have one with an offset, but this one I'm able to tell them exactly where I want the drain so I don't have to move the drain location. Really cool, this is Revolutionary Shower Systems. I'm not sponsored by them. It's a small company that I like to support. Really good people over there. Uh, but yeah, today what we did is we got our wall board up and this is perma base. This is cement board. It has little balls of foam in it, which make it a little easier to score and snap. And it's just lighter. It's easier to put up. What, what's also really nice about this is it's very cost effective. I think a three by five sheet is about $11. So much cheaper than curdy board or another foam board. And I really like it. It's, it's hard, it's stiff, it doesn't bend in between the studs. So we got our wall board up. Before we did that, I furred and I, I did some sister studs. I did everything I could to get the studs plumb and straight so that when we're ready to hang our wall board, I got a nice level surface. I mean, this came out really nice. I have really nice plumb flat walls on both. And that's really important if you're going to be doing cement board or another wall board. You want to make sure that you're at least flat. Maybe not, you don't have to do plumb. We like to do plumb because then all of our cuts are going to be the same. All of our cuts will be the same on the inside corners. Our shower glass is going to be measured, cut square. It just makes things a lot easier if you're plumb too, but definitely you want to be flat. Now that we got the walls up, I'm going to go ahead and put the foam pan in. So with the foam pan, you can do it two different ways. You can either have it to where your foam pan butts up against your wall like this, or you can have it where your pan slips under. Obviously we opted to have it slip under. So what we did here is we actually used some two by fours and some horseshoe shims to get us to the right height to stack our board because I didn't want to put the foam pan in and then be stomping all over the foam pan while we're trying to hang cement board screws and dropping tools. Uh, that's one thing about the foam pans is you got to be careful with them. So I want to get as much work done as possible on the walls before we did the pan. So we got the wall board up this morning. Now it's time to put in this RSS pan. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get my surface wet because this is a self-leveling underlayment and it's very porous. So I'm just going to give it a little drink so it doesn't suck all of the moisture out of the thin set. So you'll see how porous this, this is. It would probably be, you know, you could put a primer on it too, that would help but I'm really sopping the water on here and you can see how, how thirsty it is. You know, it's already drying up. Okay, so I got, got a good drink on the self-leveling underlayment here. And what I'm using is Schluter All Set for the thin set. And it's just what we had. Yeah, I don't think it's really that important as long as it's a, a good modified thin set, which Schluter All Set is.
we've mixed up about the right amount, Kirk. So what I'm using here is a, this is a half inch by half inch notch trowel. So yeah, I'm using a half inch by half inch notch. That's going to give me a nice bed to put, put down on the foam. You want to make sure you have a hundred percent coverage. Uh, do not put one of these foam pans down on an unlevel or not flat surface. Well, it has to be level and flat. Uh, do not try to build up with thin set. You need a level flat surface. That's why we did this self-leveling underlayment. Again, I have a great video on it. Link in the description below. I'm gonna start with this side. Please visit tilecoach.com where you can have access to a tile forum, a community of professionals and DIYers, if, if that's you, that you can ask your questions and someone will help you. I hop on there usually about once a day and it's just so cool to see everybody helping each other out with their tile questions. I also have individual booking sessions. If you need to talk to me, uh, we'll do a Zoom call or a FaceTime. You can sign up for that as well too. So tilecoach.com is where it's at. Go check it out. So I got that in before I push it down. Before I push it down, I'm gonna put some thin set here where the pan connects. Going to join the two panels. Now I'll get the tile coach side. Isn't that cool? And it's slipping under there nice. What I like to do is, is get on here and give it a nice wiggle back and forth to help collapse those ridges and get all the air out. You can hear a little bit of the air coming out. This is called the foam pan shimmy here. But yeah, you want it to collapse those ridges, get the full coverage. And I can feel really good coverage it's it's floating on here so now that I got that I'm gonna squeeze it all the way into the corner and I think I'm happy with where we're at now that I got that we'll go ahead and get the curb I'm gonna go ahead and fill in under this part with thin set. I'm just packing in my thin set up under this thinner foam part. And I can't say how nice it is that we didn't have to worry about drain location with this one. I just gave him the dimensions and he cut it right where the existing drain was. With this floor layout, there's actually a, a support beam right here. That's why the trap can't go any farther that way. So the drain couldn't be centered. It had to be offset. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and we'll get the curb cut in here. The bottom of the curb has these little grooves in it to, for the thin set to lock into. So that's what I'm doing here is I'm just filling, filling those channels. And if you've ever had to remove one of these, uh, they're very difficult to take out. 
I had a display in my showroom that I took out and it's actually quite difficult to get them, get them out. So, and I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna, I'm going to uh, put some thin set to bond it to the pan as well. Bubbles right in the middle. Level curb is very important. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Same thing. Make sure I'm level here, which I am. Give it a wiggle to collapse those ridges. And there we go. So the pan is thin set it in, my curbs are in. You can see we have a really nice level curb and that's a result from doing the self leveler beforehand, taking all the guesswork out of it. You wanna start flat and level before doing these foam pans. So now that I have the foam pan down, I need to get my flow effects drain in. And even though I have a really nice cutout here, I still need to hook it up to the sewer pipe. And down the hole, what we have here is a two inch stub out, which is this two inch pipe. This is coming up right out of the P-trap down here. So I need to use a coupler to go on down there. And then I need to use this little extension piece of two inch pipe that I cut. You know, you guys might use PVC where you're at, but here on the West Coast, we use ABS. Both ABS and PVC come in the flow effects. So whichever pipe you have, you can use. This is a two-fold process. I need to get the flange embedded into the foam pan with thin set. And you'll notice these mechanical bonding hexagons that are on the flow effects. I'll be packing this with thin set and combing the thin set on here and squishing it down and gluing it all at the same time. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my thin set into the CNC cutout that RSS made. Then I'll take my bonding flange here and I'm gonna back butter into the bonding flange. One of the things that I really like about the flow effects is that it has these hexagons to lock in the thin set. You'll notice on a curdy flange, it's completely smooth and doesn't bond in there really well. Okay, so I'm just gonna set this here for a second. And so now I have my ABS cement. That booger off of there. I put it on my pipe here. Next goes the coupler. I put that coupler on there. Give it a little twist. So now the coupler's on there. And then the last thing is my pipe here. Put that in. Now I'm going to put it on the inside of the 
flow effects. Make sure I got a good squish. And that's how it goes. So it's all glued in here. The nice thing, one of the nice things about the flow effects too is you can see where the pipe meets the bonding flange. And I can tell I have a really good seal there. It's all the way up to the top and we are good i'll just do this little number so the last thing we're going to do for the day is put down the sheet membrane just on the pan because we're going to be working on it tomorrow and I don't want it to be fresh set while we're stepping on it. This is a quarter inch by 3 16 v-notch trowel. Oh yeah, it'll slip in there. Okay, so the key to um, the membrane, making sure you don't get any air bubbles, is work from the inside to the edges. So I'm just expelling all the air with this 10 inch taping knife here. Again, working from the, the center point. to the edges. It also helps to cut a hole in your drain. And I'm just making a little X right there so that air can come out right there as well. So I use a combination of a couple different taping knives. These are just drywall taping knives to get all of the air bubbles out. And the RSS membrane is a really good membrane. Everybody I've talked to who uses it really likes it. It's similar to Laticrete's Hydroband sheet membrane. So it's thicker than Schluter Curdy. It has a little more memory than Schluter Curdy, which is nice. And it's it's just thick, it's durable. You can see I'm being pretty aggressive with it here in the corners to get it under there and it's not tearing or anything. And that's okay because we're gonna have a two inch band going all around. So that's why I'm not being real careful on the edges there. Find the edges of the flow effects. 
which is right here. So I like to run my hands over the entire floor just to really check for any air bubbles that I might have missed, but I don't see any. I'm also going to cut this little extra, cut this little extra off right here, it's no big deal. I will be wrapping membrane over the curb and then preformed corners. I'll be using preformed corners and band going two inches up the wall. For the walls, I'm going to be using liquid hydro band after, of course, I use alkali resistant mesh tape in the corners per the permabase instructions but this will all get liquid. All right, so day five is a wrap. We got the Flowfex drain in to the RSS pan, thin set it down, uh, looks beautiful. I love doing these foam pans and sheet membrane because it's just so clean. It just looks so nice. You almost don't want to cover it up with tile, but we're going to. And last but not least, I love you. I love being your tile coach and we'll see you on the next video.